Hey guys, Heather McKay here. I just want to talk to you quickly about the Certified Professional Photographer Certification from PPA, Professional Photographers of America. As you may know, if you've watched my last couple videos, with uh, Imaging USA being this month in January 2020, I'm doing a series this whole month. Every video is related to Professional Photographers of America. So if you haven't seen my last two videos on Imaging USA and seven super genius tips on how to crush that convention or any convention, and then another video that I have uh, last week, which was 13 plus reasons why I love being a member of PPA. Now I want to follow it up with something I didn't bring up in that video because it's a longer topic. So that's why I want to talk about it separately. So certified prof professional photographers, should you do it? That's what we're talking about today. Great. So thanks for swinging by the channel. I hope this uh, helps you figure out whether you want to be a member of PPA or if you are a member of PPA, how you can get even more out of that. Uh, organization. Like I said in last week's video, it's about $300 a year, but it comes with a crap ton of perks uh, like insurance and uh, things like that. But this topic today, Certified Professional Photographer, if you found this video, then you're already probably interested in it. So that's what we'll go over. I'm going to dive right into it. So first of all, um, do you need to become a Certified Professional Photographer? That's like the first question. So let's go, let's jump into that. The answer is no, you don't have to be a Certified Professional Photographer. Your clients don't give a shit. Honestly, they really don't. Sorry for the cursing, but our clients don't care. They're not qualified and they don't know the difference. So th honestly, no, they don't care. Why should you do it? And why did I become a certified professional photographer? It's for your own benefit. It's to make you level up. It's to make you a better photographer. Um, especially these days, I ranted on this or I, I sneak it into some of my videos, but I think everybody sucks, <laughs> honestly. Like photographers these days are not very good. Um, because there's no critique, there's no feedback, there's only Instagram likes and Facebook likes. So really, honestly, like I personally think everybody's work sucks these days. Not everybody. And not to say I'm the best in the world, but whatever. Maybe I'll do, eventually I'll do a real video on like exactly why. But my point is becoming a certified professional photographer, it's really to help you. I mean, it's a really difficult process. It takes some time um, and it makes you level up. So let's get into my story. I'll just really quickly um, tell you why I decided to become a photographer and how I got certified. So I think this will really help you if you're looking at becoming a certified professional photographer or even if you just want to uh, not go all the way with the certification, but you know, go through the process. I'll, show, I'll share with you how I did it and it actually made it really, really fun. Uh, and I'm so glad I did it the way I did it. So anyway, my name's Heather McKay, if this is your first time finding me, and I've been a wedding photographer since 2002. So I straddled the film and digital transition. I come from old school photography realm. I have a degree in photography. I've been a photographer since like high school. I did all kinds of alternative processes and I even developed my own color film. I mean, I had a very advanced high school situation uh, and I've been a wedding photographer, you know, since 2002 now. So my whole life really I've been a photographer and um, now I'm, you know, doing business coaching for other photographers and it's super exciting to help someone who's new and fresh and young and vibrant and has all that energy for the for photography and passion and they want to follow their dream. But I'm here to give you like business advice, sales advice, that kind of stuff. That's what you'll find on my channel, specifically how to start selling products. That's what I love helping you do. I love making it so easy for you to offer products instead of digital. So if you haven't been to my channel before, if you want to hit subscribe and hit that little bell icon down below, that'll alert you when I have a new video, usually Friday afternoons, uh, east two o'clock ish Eastern standard time is generally when I release my new videos, but I do do it seasonally. So not every Friday, but anyway, so get back, let's get back into the certified professional photographer process and why I became a CPP in, in my process. Cause I think that's a little bit interesting and worth talking about. And then I'm going to get into what to expect when you go down the rabbit hole of CPP. Okay. So like we said, it's professional photographers of America, which is a huge organization. It's like the organization. If you're going to be a professional photographer, uh, it's totally worth joining and they have a lot of different not just cpp but they have a ton of different um things you can do to become a better photographer and get awards and you can become a master photographer and you can get all these little chains and dangles and things um, but the certified professional photographer is a little different in that they actually have a third party certification that actually judges it. So it's a legit certification. It's not just some random certificate you're getting from one organization that's not valid. It actually is 
similar to like getting a degree almost. I mean, it's really like a valid thing. So there's one reason to join or to become a CPP. The second reason, like I said before, is it just makes you up your game with technically or practice things you don't use every day. Like for me, I'm not a studio photographer, I do weddings. So when I did it, it really helped me like remember what some gear was and how to do studio lighting and what things are called that I just find naturally in the world and that sort of stuff. So there's reasons like that to join but or to become a CPP. But the reason I did it, and here's my story, is at the time I was, so Professional Photographers of America is like the national thing. And then they have state. Every state has its own affiliated group. And um, in New York State, it's a uh, society, it's a New York State Society for Professional Photographers or PPSNYS, Professional Photographers of New York State Society, whatever. It's a weird long name because it's been around for 100 years. Um, and then that's the state level. And then the local level is there's usually most cities have uh, a local chapter. It's loosely affiliated. PPA doesn't really help the local chapter at all, but it is uh, affiliated. So ours is Greater Rochester Professional Photographers. So I'm in Rochester, New York, and that's the one that we have here. So years ago, I think 2000 and Eight to 2012 or something like that I was a member and I went up the ranks in the board and so I did programs program chair for a while I did president and when I was president I I'm a big fan of just like always picking an agenda so I did two things as president one was I wanted to help people become certified professional photographers and then two we, we revamped the website and social media and became really modern with grip with greater Ro rochester professional photographers but the cpp specifically what i realized is rochester new york being where kodak is from the, everyone's a photographer literally like throw a stone and there's photographers professional photographers amateur photographers everybody's a freaking photographer in rochester but i realized there's only three certified professional photographers in all of rochester so I thought, how cool would that be if we all became certified professional photographers? We could use it in our own marketing. We could use it as just a cherry on top if somebody just was trying to decide between booking me or somebody else. You know, just like, hey, I'm legit. I actually know what I'm doing. Give them peace of mind, right? So, so what we did, and this is what I really want to share today because it was really fun. I'm so glad we did it this way. But what we did is we broke out, I recruited, like it was myself because I wanted to get my certification. I already had a degree in photography, but the certification's different. And, um, and it had been years, years, years since I went to college. So it was a nice time for a refresher. So anyway, we, we did like a group of like, um, I think there were eight of us, seven or eight of us. It was like a decent sized group. And we did a 12 week study group to become certified professional photographers. And I'm so glad we did that way. So every one of us, we met every single week at the same time every week for like two hours. And what we would do is we went chapter by chapter through like the book and the process of everything about the CPP study group. So that's exactly what it was, CPP study group. And it was so awesome. I think I grew more as a person and a photographer and I got to know these other photographers in grip on a whole different level. Uh, it was so rewarding. And then at the end of it, we all went to our, our state convention. We didn't do Imaging USA, but we went to our state convention and we were able to take the CPP exam at our state convention. Uh, I think at the time it was called Photo Northeast, but you can do it at Imaging USA as well. Uh, and a lot of stuff has changed with the CPP process since I did mine. Um, but basically, let's get into now what to expect. So first of all, if you want to get your CPP, I highly recommend you just reach out to other photographers and see if you want to do it. Even if you don't actually get the test and do the actual CPP process, it's invaluable to just have homework again, honestly, after school, right? So uh, I mean, I'm, I hadn't been in school in a really long time. So it was really fun to just be like, okay, well, this is the week we're working on the zone system. This is the week we're working on Rembrandt lighting versus butterfly lighting versus whatever. This is the week where we're, it just really helps you like, okay, what the heck is an inst uh, histogram? How do you read it? How do you know you're not clipping your highlights or your shadows? Like, it was just really nice to like nerd out <laughs> with other photographers. Um, it's one thing to do it on your own by yourself, but it's totally different to do it with other people. Plus then you have people to model and you can test out. I really like got better at flash, um, things that I don't have time to like really practice when I'm at a wedding. I was able to practice as a, during the CPP study group. Okay. So, uh, next up, let's see, like, um, 
I want to just talk a little bit more about like what they expect. So CPP process, first thing you do if you wanted to become a certified professional photographer is you go to PPA's website. You do have to be a PPA member. So I'll link below with my like referral link. If you feel like using it, that'd be awesome. I think I get free admission to Imaging USA or something if I get enough people sign up. So it doesn't cost you any more to actually say, if you use my link or uh, actually you have to type in my name, Heather McKay but as a referral, but um, I think you get $35, $35 off your first year of um, membership, PPA membership. So anyway, you have to be a member of PPA to become a certified professional photographer. And then what you do is you pay $200 to declare your candidacy, okay? So then you declare your candidacy to become a CPP and then you have two years to actually like finish the process. Um, and if you don't do it in the two years, I mean, that's plenty of time. It really is. 12 weeks was great. I loved doing the study group for 12 weeks. So um, you have two years to do it. And if you miss that downline for whatever reason, you can actually pay $100 to like keep going. But I think two years is more than enough time if you already kind of know what you're doing as a photographer. Um, on PPA's website, they have a metric ton of information about the CPP process. There's links, there's sample images, there's tutorials, there's videos, like they walk you through the whole process. You really could do it self-study. If you're a PPA member, you just go to the website and knock yourself out. Um, again, I think it's fun to have an accountability group and to go through it together and have other, you know, one thing that we really found with our study group is somebody would interpret, um, some instructions a little differently than somebody else or like I had worked for a photo lab, so color theory is like, which is why I'm so judgmental about people's work sucking. Um, color theory for me is like my wheelhouse because I worked for a photo lab for 10 years. Uh, so like I know the difference between magenta and red or yellow and green or cyan or blue, like those are different. <laughs> people don't even know what magenta is. So I was able to really help people. And, uh, you know, and I used to teach at the photo lab on how to, on color theory. So when that week came up in the CPP study group, I led that week. Uh, and that's what we did every week. Somebody else was in charge, kind of like a book club where, you know, you're in charge of chapter three, you go knock it out and then you come back and like teach us as a teacher. So that's how we did our study group. And it was so awesome. I loved it. And everybody had their own strengths and weaknesses. So it was perfect. Um, so then you take a written exam and when I took it, the passing grade was 60 or 70. So like a, a C or a D, which I think was a very low bar personally. Uh, but it helps because of that. Like I, I mean, I don't do studio photography, so I struggled a little bit with some of the gear cause I don't use a parabolic, whatever. I don't use different ref like reflectors and spot, uh, you know, snoots and things. I don't really use that stuff as a wedding photographer. So, um, I was a little real rusty on that section as far as like the kind of gear. I don't buy that gear. I'm very low maintenance with my gear, as you'll see with some other videos on my channel. I'm all about like streamlined and minimal cause I like to shoot alone at weddings. So I, I'm like, I still want studio amazing results, but with minimal gear. So that part of the, um, test, I, you know, I probably struggled and I, I don't really remember, but I'm sure I got some of those answers wrong. But then color theory, like I said, I come from that background. So that I probably crushed that section. Um, I come from the film background and I've done medium format. And like, there was a lot of those were still on the exam. I don't think they're on the exam anymore because they're less relevant to a modern photographer. But when I took the CPP, all that old school stuff was still on the exam. So I crushed. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted. I have my phone on do not disturb, but some telemarketers are just called. Ugh. Telemarketer is the worst. And I was just thinking I should probably introduce my little assistant today. He's working very hard for me. This is Clark. <laughs> and also these are not my photos. Uh, I'm actually visiting friends and I love that they have all these amazing photos all over their walls. They do have one of mine. They're past clients of mine. Uh, but I'm I'm in Utah working from their house this, uh, this month so I can snowboard and stuff. So I'll do a different video with like a tour of their house because it's really fun, side, total sidebar. It's really fun um, as a photographer to come into someone's house and see how they have all this beautiful, gorgeous photography all over the place. So anyway, that's Clark. Uh, you can leave a comment and say hi and I will let him know. <laughs> He's working really hard for me right here. So anyway, let's get back to the CPP process. There's a written exam. And uh, like I said, it's changed a bit since I did it, which is why I'm talking more about why you would want to do it in this video than versus like walking you through how to, how to go through um, the process and what to expect. The other thing that's changed is the image review process. So uh, we did have to do an image review, which was so great. It was so fun to do that. Uh, but that process also changed right after I did the CPP. I think I got my CPP in 2010. 
Yeah, I did. I became a green photography photographer certified and a certified professional photographer both that year. That was like my year's resolution. So uh, the image review is awesome. So back then, it's changed a little, but back then we sent in 20 images that had to be actual client work. It couldn't be studio work or couldn't be specifically for the CPP exam. I actually, as a wedding photographer, I appreciated that because there's nothing harder than getting a cool shot at a wedding, especially getting something uh, different than other people or whatever. So I appreciated that sending in your images at the time needed to be client work. Uh, it's very easy, and this is why it's a different rant, but it's different to set up something in a studio and you have all day and maybe you have a dog interrupting you or a kid, but that's it. It's totally different than the pressure of a wedding day and you're dealing with somebody else's agenda, not your own. Um, so studio work, it's like, yeah, okay, you can set up this inanimate object on a table and light it for three hours. Well, that to me is not, it, it's challenging in that that's not my wheelhouse, but it's not challenging as far as the exam goes. Like I'm doing that stuff at a reception on my way to try to get water and go to the bathroom right before the first dance. <laughs> so I have to do all the centerpieces and all that stuff. So to me, it was really awesome that we had to send in 20 images from clients real client work and that it had to be a variety. So we had to show, you know, a silhouette. We had to show uh, low key, high key, basically. Um, you know, we had to show Rembrandt lighting, butterfly lighting. So I still had to show the traditional classic stuff, but I had to showcase it in client work. So that was actually really fun. And again, I hadn't had to put words to my work in a long time in that way. So it was really cool to realize that I had forgotten what rainbow lighting was called or broad lighting or short lighting or whatever, but instinctually I was doing that stuff at every wedding um, just because I learned it so long ago and it was so ingrained in me. So that was really kind of cool to like get that confidence a little bit or whatever. And then the other thing that was really funny and just sort of a random side note is um, at the time, like 2009, for fun, I bought myself a fisheye lens. And um, I, I was like, 2009 was like my year of using the fisheye. And so everybody in my study group was like really busting on me pretty hardcore. They, especially because I use a fisheye for portraits, which is usually a no-no, but I loved it. I love doing fisheye portraits and, and getting good ones. Uh, so everybody in my study group was like busting on me. They were like, are you gonna send in all 20 photos and they're all gonna be fisheye? <laughs> so, and actually I did. I ended up sending in like five, like a lot. Um, and it was funny and yeah, I passed. So it was great. So I passed the exam. Um, I think everybody that took the exam at our state convention did pass from our study group. Yes. I think there was six of us. So a lot of us took it and passed and we all passed the image review. I think maybe one person had to like resubmit their images, like new images that got critiqued and then they had to redo it. And then after that, we had a new group from grip, uh, go through and do a new 12 weeks of study. And it was really fun as president of the Greater Rochester Professional Photographers to like have these rotating study groups. Um, and it felt really good for us to become CPPs. We became super tight knit friends. Um, so I highly recommend if you go through the process to do it that way. Uh, okay, any other questions? So if you have any questions of something I haven't talked about uh, about the CPP process, go ahead and leave it below and I'll answer them. Uh, like I said, it's changed quite a bit, but I'm happy to help. I'm happy to look at the website and figure it out, for, you know, look it up for you. Um, when you become a CPA, or PPA member, Professional Photographers of America, and you go to their website and look at the CPP stuff, there's all these like drop down menus. And there's like, like I said before, there's um, images uh, that you can download of examples of what you need to try to capture and how do you practice. Uh, they do a lot of flash photography plus consistent light or consistent lighting, which is what I have here is this LED that's constantly on me. Um, so that would be like studio lighting, like constant light. They also have like uh, other stuff. So if you're, if you're a natural light photographer or available light photographer, going through the CPP process is going to give you so much confidence. You're gonna learn all about your gear. You're gonna learn how to use flash. You're gonna get over the fear of it. Um, I always make fun of people who say, who use it as a marketing thing on their website that I'm an available light photographer. My running joke is, you know what's available? A flash. A flash is also available. <laughs> and I think if you're charging money and you're a professional photographer, you should learn how to use your flash. That's, uh, it, I, my work on my website looks like it's all available light or natural light, but I can tell you that almost every photo has flash in it.
it just enhances it. It just makes it look better. I mean, I'm standing in front of a big window here. I could use this natural light. It's a huge window, nice soft box. It's snowing outside, which is perfect. But adding this LED light just enhances everything and then it darkens the background. So I feel like, you know what? Available light is also added light. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with adding light. The only reason people use that is because they're afraid of it. So going through the CPP process, there is another reason to go through the process whether you get the degree or not. Um, so to wrap up, I just want to say that the other thing about the CPP is if you go through the process, you get approved, um, it lasts for three years and you actually have to re-up. Uh, you can, one way you can re-up is going to their Imaging USA three years in a row. Uh, so there you go. There's a reason to go to Imaging USA. And I have that other video on how to, how to go to that convention and like really have a good time and learn a lot. Or you can like get credits for like, um, you know, they just want to make sure you're, you're staying educated just like any other certification, they just want to make sure that you're still crushing it and learning more and more and more about your industry. Uh, and then I think you have to pay another $100 every three years. So uh, honestly, I've let mine lapse, um, but I don't really care uh, any, anymore. Like for me, it was more the personal. Um, I wanted to do it for me. I didn't really care about having the title anymore. Like, um, so just honestly, I let mine lapse, big deal. But, you know, if I was still had a full studio, I might still, I probably would, keep it going, but I'm wrapping down my photography business too. Uh, so anyway, on that note, the other thing I want to say about the CBP is that once you go through the process, this is the perfect stuff to put on Instagram. This is the perfect stuff to talk about on Facebook lives, share your journey with your client base in your newsletter. I blogged it back then. That was like really all there was, was blogging uh, in 2010. So I blogged it. I blogged like Hey, I'm doing this. Hey, I'm the president of GRIP. Hey, I'm, you know, we're doing the study group here. I, so on my blog, I have, I even have on my website somewhere, a blog post of the images I submitted. I had a blog post about images I was thinking about submitting. And that was really fun. My, my clients felt really connected to me. My past clients loved seeing their photos as ones that I was submit, submitting. They liked hearing my process of like why I love that photo and why it fits the certification. So if you go through the process, use it as a marketing tool. That's in my, those are, that's the second biggest reason to get it. One is for your own development as a photographer. And two is for that reason, is to use it as a marketing tool. It separates you from the amateur photographer who's terrified of flash, right? So you get to show like how you're learning, how you're growing. Uh, then my photographers got really like making fun of me about this fisheye lens. Like that it was fun. I don't, they call it the fishbowl. They forget what it's called, but uh, you know, it just became like an inside joke that we had and it was just a good marketing technique. If I was doing it today, I would absolutely be doing um, Instagram stories constantly. I'd be showing stuff. You could use it if you, on Instagram, you could post a photo and then talk about technically what it is in the photo that you're learning in the CPP process. Like, hey, this is an example I just did from a wedding or a portrait and it's Rembrandt lighting. What is Rembrandt lighting? Blah, blah, blah. Butterfly lighting, blah, blah, blah. And it educates clients in a way that they then trust you even more to get them at a flattering angle and them with good flattering lighting. Uh, it also, sh it just separates you from somebody else. So it's not like you're teaching your clients about photography, but it, it sets them at ease. Uh, and then they're going to see your work improve through the process and they're going to feel attached to that process. So it's just like anything else um, that you do in your business, that kind of camaraderie with your client base is always awesome. And it's something you can send out in your newsletter. You can do a press release when you get your certified professional photographer and maybe get on the news talking about the process. Like that's something I should have done back then, which is one of the reasons I wanted to do a video today about it. So anyway, to wrap up, if you're not a PPA member, uh, and you're going to Imaging USA, definitely become a PPA member and check out my other two videos, which I will link in the sidebar uh, that I just did the last two weeks on Imaging USA, like super genius tips on how to go to one of those conferences. And then two, like a plethora of benefits of being a PPA member, like some of my favorites. Um, and then that link will be below in the description. Um, or if you're seeing this on Instagram, I'll put it in my bio. So um, that's pretty easy. And then if you send, say yeah, I'm a referred thing, I think you get $35, you do get $35 off your first year and I get something, I don't know what. So I do get a little kickback, but I'm just giving this information because I want to. <laughs> All right, so uh, after that, I want, if you do go through the process or whatever you want to share below on the description or on the comments, I'd love to hear, you know, where do you struggle with your photography? Where do you know you need to work on? Like for me, it's always studio work. 
Uh, I don't do it very often and I'm not that great at it. Um, and then, yeah, I'd just love to hear what your journey is. And if you're a CPP and you're watching this for whatever reason, share below what the process was like for you or if you've booked any gigs because of it. I definitely had a really good years after that uh, financially with my business. And I think it was just yet another one of those things that gave them more peace of a mind when they were hiring me. So, you know, it's not necessarily they're gonna choose you because you're a CPP, but it's nice to have, and you can list it on your resume and the whole nine yards. So that's it. That's what, Those are my like ramblings about the CPP process. I'm not even gonna edit this video. I'm just gonna like put the two clips together and let it go because I think there's a lot of value in just hearing me talk it out. Uh, and I'd love to hear your uh, opinion. And definitely, like I said, the highlight is to like set up a study group. So if you're headed to Imaging USA or WPPI, maybe you make that one of your little goals is to make friends that might also want to do this with you because you can do it remotely. You don't have to meet in person to do this with other photographers. You can just do video chats at uh, the same time every week or phone calls and like go through the process together. So that's it. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.